Hi everyone! Welcome to my channel. My name is Noelle and I review and unbox subscription boxes here on my channel, but today is a little bit different because I am answering questions that you sent to me as part of my 5,000 subscriber celebration. So it is my 5k Q&A, so thank you so much to all of you who are some of those subscribers. If you've been with me from the very beginning, three and a half years ago, or you are a new subscriber, I really appreciate all of your support. I had no idea that I would still be doing this three and a half years later when I first posted back in 2019. Obviously, like many other YouTube channels, I kind of had a little bit of a boost in uh, viewership during the uh, panda, but I am very excited that I am still able to do it and share great subscription boxes with all of you. So I did go ahead and print out the questions that you submitted. At the end, I will try to do a little random number picker to find out who the winner of the giveaway box is. And thank you so much to those of you who did uh, submit questions. There were some repeats, so I will obviously only answer those repeated questions once. There were some that didn't quite fit into any category, so like I said, I will do my best to get through all of these questions. I do have a playlist as well with my past Q&As. I think it's been over a year since I've done one, so some of the answers to questions that were repeats that I have answered before are in those videos if you ever want to go back and look into the archives, and I'm sure some of my answers have changed even as well. So in terms of subscription boxes, one of the questions that I got was, what was the very first box you ever opened and which subscription box is your absolute and never ever live without? So that was from Corinne. Thank you for that question. Now, some of you who've been around here for quite a while, you will know the answer to that question. The very first box that I opened here on the channel is still my first video here on the channel, and it was Box of Style by Rachel Zoe before it became Curateur. And again, that was back in September of 2019. I have gotten other subscription boxes boxes before that. I had tried FabFitFun once before that. I'd had Try the World, but that was the first time that I decided to go ahead and try my own hand at uh, doing an unboxing video. And I think in that first year, I only in the first two months on YouTube, I think I only posted like five videos and then slowly I ramped up to the point where I am now, which is posting every single day and sometimes twice a day. In terms of my favorite box, if you have again been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know that I don't have a favorite box that changes from season to season, month to month, but I definitely have an ever-changing kind of top five. So I think I'll have the opportunity to answer that for you as well. Kalina also asked the same question. So in terms of boxes that I really look forward to, not necessarily my absolute all the time favorites, um, I do really look forward to my French Country Home, that more luxury French brand subscription. I love Norley Box. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to keep opening it here on the channel because they're kind of shifting their marketing, but I'm gonna do my best. I have. Of course, I love all the home decor boxes that I open here on the channel because I only open a handful and they're really the ones that I do believe in. I love some of the Hugo boxes like Hugo in a box, Be Relaxed. Some of those are my favorites and there are some really great monthly lifestyle boxes as well. But if you keep seeing it here on the channel um, and you keep watching my reviews, you can usually tell from my facial expressions and my comments in terms of the boxes that are in that top five. But probably right now I would say, you know, Norley, uh, Hugo in a box, be relaxed, my trove box, those are all up there for me and I'm probably missing some too. So how long have you been getting subscription boxes and what was your first one? So Katie, we answered that one already. What percentage of items do you keep from Susan? I would say now because I do give to friends and family, I do donations, and of course I do give a lot back to you guys in terms of giveaways. Uh, some of the items are just oversized and it'd be really hard to ship in a giveaway box, but I would say I probably only keep about 20%. Um, the boxes that I pay for, I do a lot of the times keep those items because I have paid for them. The boxes that I receive as PR as part of the review process, I would say I only keep about 20% of it because there's just so much product that I can't necessarily use and I like to share it with other people. Um, so it says, what is my favorite part of unboxing subscription boxes? I like to be delighted. I like to find useful and beautiful things. Um, and I also really just love the community that I found here on YouTube. I was watching something else where an influencer, a content creator was talking about how different audiences are and how over on other platforms like TikTok, or Instagram, people can be really harsh and negative, but I found that other YouTube creators, but also just the YouTube community is really, really supportive. People are always asking how they can support my channel. Um, people are always uh, being really positive in our Facebook group. So 
that's what I have found kind of surprising but also the best part of opening boxes and also just getting to know some of the box owners has been really a treat for me as well. If I could bring back any box no longer available, which would you choose? That's from Lori. Lori, that is hard because there are so many boxes that I did love that have gone by the wayside. I did really love Saltwater and Sand. That was a great luxury coastal living box. Um, I also really loved Pop Sugar. That was like, um, I think I only got one box from them and it wound up being their last. Uh, I think Sunday Riley did a good subscription box and then they never came back. So a lot of the bigger lifestyle quarterly boxes. Um, there have been a few monthly ones that I was sad to see go as well. I was just thinking about like Good Vibe Scribe and SO Subscribe. Those were great ones as well. Um, but off the top of my head, that's what I would say is that Pop Sugar box, they, they went out with a bang for me. That last box was really fantastic. Any plans to reach out to boxes you used to feature for PR? That's from Anonimo, but I know who you are, Anonimo. Um, so um, they, they gave us a lot of questions. Uh, so probably not unless you guys request it. There's usually a reason if I don't feature a box on the channel anymore, even that either they have decided to stop sending it to me and I can't work it into my budget, or uh, I just don't think it fits with the channel anymore, or they're no longer sending out boxes. So, But if there is something that you would like to see featured again and you would like me to try to shift my budget around so that I could pay for it and get it to feature it, please let me know in the comments. Uh, moving kind of more into YouTube in general, what are my hopes for the channel in the future? That's from Sarah. Um, I would love this to turn into more of a lifestyle channel, but just because of my filming limitations, for me it's a lot easier to do these continuous take videos where I don't edit them. It's just a lot more authentic for me, but also just I, it's, I don't have like a full filming studio. I don't know any sort of editing uh, software, and I would really have to put a lot of other things on hold in my life to do that. I would love to share my travels with you a little bit more, but obviously to create really good vlogs that I'd be proud of, that would take a lot more effort and time and I would have to take something else out of my work life, personal life, and I'm not quite there yet, but I do know that I do need to eventually diversify my content. But one day I would love to be more of a lifestyle brand and maybe be invited to curate a box for another brand or something like that. That would be a really fun kind of collaboration opportunity for me. Um, and some of you guys know, you have asked what kind of subscription box I would have. It would be a luxury travel subscription, most likely featuring like kind of the ideas or items that you would get at a luxury boutique hotel traveling to uh, foreign countries. So it says, uh, what are your plans for your YouTube? It seems across all YouTube, the views, numbers of subs and boxes have slowed down. I think some of that is just the contrast from those two years where everyone was cooped up at home and looking for content and discovering YouTube, sometimes people for the first time ever same thing with subscription boxes there's definitely been a decrease because we aren't all locked up in our homes and like looking for that retail value to be sent to our homes um, I am not like this isn't my main job necessarily it's not like my be-all end-all as much as I love it as much as I don't mind it taking up like 60% of my work week these days um, but I I don't have any major plans to change because that's never really been my goal. I would rather have a really solid channel that has good engagement versus having a hundred thousand subscribers and you, you know like like the numbers, the metrics aren't as important to me and I've had to kind of let that go. At one point I was like, this, this would be great if I could do this full time and make money. And yes, I make money. I am definitely running in the black at this point for even the boxes that I pay for. I do have to be kind of careful with it. But between my uh, limited uh, YouTube earnings and some affiliate money that comes in and then the photography that I do for over on Instagram, I am definitely making this channel pay for itself, but it's never, I don't, think it's ever going to be like my main source of income, which is okay. And knowing that kind of makes it more fun for me because as soon as I think it becomes a job, it will be less fun and less enjoyable. So I have to kind of keep finding that balance. Can you make a collab with other YouTubers? Again, that is also from Anonimo. Um, I have done collabs. I don't find them to be uh, that well received. I think it's a really good thing for channels that are smaller to do with larger channels to increase their viewership. And then if people like what they see, they stick around. But the few collabs that I have done, I haven't seen great traction. And honestly, sometimes it can get a little bit unwieldy. And like, it's like a group project in school where it's like, sometimes you feel like some people aren't doing their fair share. And sometimes that could be me. 
and um, it's just I don't feel like a lot of people don't necessarily want to watch those videos. There is a handful for sure, but um, it just doesn't seem to uh, like work with my channel and also just like my filming and posting schedule to make that work for everybody says, have you ever thought about teaching yoga or doing relaxation exercises on YouTube? That's from Karen. I am, I love teaching yoga. I have learned that I don't like teaching yoga on camera. I don't like it to be sort of frozen in time where I can't edit it and change it. I'm already nervous about having to teach online in a Zoom meeting for my yoga teacher training that I'm currently in. So I don't see that ever happening. In terms of doing like meditations or relaxation exercises where I could probably rehearse it a little bit and make sure that it's like clean and neat I would definitely consider doing that. I've also considered doing more readings because some of you have said that you like when I read passages out of books for my book box unboxings. So it's something like that I could consider doing. Would you consider organizing a no-bot gathering for food, fun, and laughter from Sandra? Absolutely. I would love to have a get-together sometime or even a vacation, but I think that's a few thousand subscribers away before we can organize something like that. But I, I do think that would be really fun to take one of our live streams and make it actually an in-person one for those who could attend. Any plans for the Facebook group besides the book club? Not currently. Right now we're already doing the gift exchanges. We do the no-body awards. We're doing our book club. And for me right now, that is enough, even though I know some of you have taken the reins on that so thank you so much to our moderators and to Priscilla who runs the book club like I currently don't see it doing anymore but again that's just one of those things that I'm glad that we have it for more communication and then also you know as the channel does eventually shift or change it's going to be a good platform for us to do those changes together Let's see. What has been your favorite thing about my YouTube career? I wouldn't really call it a career, but again, it has definitely been the community. So thank you for that question, Clea. In terms of more, more yoga questions, which I am excited about, it says regarding yoga, can it calm a person with a condition like MS or epilepsy? That's from Jenna. I am honestly not sure. I haven't done a lot of yoga for other pop populations. I know that I do think that it's very calming in general, but there are so many different kinds of yoga, so you would have to find the right one for you. I've definitely had students that have had MS or epilepsy, but obviously there are all kinds of modifications that need to be taken into account. And generally the kind of yoga that I teach is a very active heated vinyasa flow, so that is not for everyone and everybody. It says, how's your yoga certification going? It is not going well because it started at the beginning of April and there's a lot of online content and I have been away for three weeks so I am very very behind so I'm gonna have to just be disciplined and give myself a good you know three weekend intensives to get caught up and watch all the material and get caught up but I do think that I can do it but just know that if you don't see me in the comments quite as much it's because I'm trying to catch up on that and make sure that I am uh, doing my part moving into the personal questions which was more than half of the questions um, but I, I uh, appreciate that because I know that's what I always want to know when I'm watching my favorite YouTubers as well as I always want to ask them the personal questions. It says, how old were you when you were adopted? I was four months old. Um, and have I met my birth parents? I have not. Uh, but I could, I w went through, I was adopted through an agency. There were a lot of adopted kids in the uh, 70s and 80s. And so I went through it was through an adoption agency and several of those adoption agencies in Korea actually have programs where you can go back. They're like on heritage trips. You can see the orphanage that you were in. You can learn about Korea. I think that would be really interesting, but I haven't necessarily had a strong urge like many other adoptees to find my birth parents, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. It's just not necessarily like on my top 10 list of things to do or places to go. Um, but I would like to go back to South Korea eventually. It's just, it's a kind of an interesting, interesting experience being someone who has very little connection with the actual culture. As a little girl, do you expect to grow up and be on screen, whether TV, computer, or movie screen? That's from Kim. Um, I will absolutely admit that even though I'm not like a big astrology person, I am totally a Leo. I'm kind of a ham. I do like to be the center of attention. I know that's a terrible thing to admit, but I think I've gotten comfortable enough to admit it. I do like to be, I like to perform. Um, I was a dancer for a while. I liked doing theater in high school. I even did a little bit in college. I can't say that I was really good at any of those things. Um, I used to imagine in my room as an only child, I feel like you have to uh, entertain yourself a lot. So I used to imagine that I had my own TV show and I would like talk to this imaginary camera as I was cleaning my room. So I would be like, I was like an early Marie Kondo, like uh, an early like organizer. And who knew that like 20, 30 years later that people would be doing that on YouTube and people would be watching the other people clean their houses. Like I had that idea way back when. So 
I, I am excited that this has given me the opportunity as like an every woman to talk with you guys on screen. So I, w I, w I mean, I would love to be an actress or I would love to be on a talk show or something. That, that's like a dream. I would love to have a travel show like Anthony Bourdain. That's like, that would be like my be all end all with like producers and people who organize everything. But I get to like do the interaction and talk to people like that would be like my true, true dream come true. Have I ever gotten a poem published from Natalie? Way back in the day, because I do have a degree in poetry, I did send out a lot of stuff to different journals. I had a couple of them published, but not in like very famous journals. Um, and then after, I mean, I didn't have very tough skin. I don't have very thick skin. So after a couple of years of rejection uh, and deciding I was just gonna go a different route uh, and go back to grad school, I stopped sending out poems. What's the first country you went to outside of the US? Tell us about that experience from Ms. Barbara. Uh, the first time I actually went outside of the US, probably I might have, <laughs> besides Korea, um, was um, I think Malaysia and I was visiting my college roommate between my junior and senior year so I was a rising senior and I went and stayed with her family in Malaysia for two months of the summer and that was amazing and that definitely uh, my grandparents were big travelers and so I've always wanted to travel but that was definitely something that I thought was kind of a unique uh, way to experience another country like my first country wasn't just you know going to Paris and backpacking around Europe but I went to Malaysia which was really awesome and I still have fond memories of that. What was my favorite place I've ever traveled to from Arlene? That is like asking me to pick my favorite box. Um, I loved New Zealand. I thought it was beautiful. I love Italy. I actually really liked India. I'm probably missing a ton of them, but um, I, I can't say a favorite. But in terms of places that I would always go back to because I know there's so, so much to explore. I mean, that's true for everywhere. New Zealand and Italy are way up there for me. Um, where are you going on your next adventure and when? That's from Mary. I love that you guys love the, the travel questions. Uh, my next adventure is actually going to be a camper van, like little surfari with my husband and I. And then after that, I think that my next like international travel won't be until next year. And we're going back to Vietnam. I've been to Vietnam before, but my husband has not. So I think that'll be our next international travel. Oh, we're also going to Toronto, but that's for baseball for uh, this summer. Let's see. Uh, top three bucket list travel destinations experiences. I would love to go to Nepal. I would love to go to Antarctica because I would love to see the penguins. Um, I would also, where else? I would love to see the Seychelles. There's so many places in the world, you guys. I would love to see every country, in all honesty, even if it means just being there for a day just to say I've done it. But I'm now getting to the point where I don't need to just check off countries off my list. I really want to go and spend time in them a little bit longer and really embrace a city for you know a week to two weeks and like there's just not enough time in, in a lifetime to do that but um, those are some of the three that, that I would say that I haven't been to yet that I would love to go to. How did my husband and I meet? We actually met through mutual friends. His uh, college friend was dating a yoga teacher that I knew and that is how we met. We met as a big group out at a bar one night and that's that's how it happened. So um, how long have we been married? We have been married now for six years. Uh, what fun times happened inside and outside of my comfort zone? Ooh, that's a hard one, Gail. Um, I don't know. I think that this is a little bit outside of my comfort zone in terms of like, I, I like to perform and everything, but kind of letting things go and not perfecting things. And that's kind of been part of my YouTube journey and not editing things down until I'm super duper proud of them. But sometimes having moments where I have to like grab something off the ground or there's a hair in my face or, you know, I stumble and stutter and miss words and say things incorrectly. That's out of my comfort zone as a perfectionist. Um, but it's also been a really enjoyable and beneficial experience as, as has like becoming a yoga teacher. You know, anytime you try something new, and then you embrace it. I think that's a good example of uh, getting out of your comfort zone, but then also having fun in the process. And sometimes it's not fun because sometimes you find out that you are not good at something as much as you're like, oh man, I would love to play guitar or piano. And like, I'm just not like the most musical person. I would like to think I am, but I'm not. Favorite style of music, <laughs> of music and musicians from Deborah. What a good segue. I promise. I didn't even know that. Um, I actually really like a lot of folk. I like, my husband has made me more of a fan of classic rock. 
Um, but I like one of my favorite musicians these days is Hozier. I've seen him like five times. I'm going to see him again this year. But we are always trying to see live music. So on the like list for this year, we are already going to see The Cure. We're going to see Weezer. Uh, my Morning Jacket is a favorite of my husband's and now mine. Uh, Hozier. So you can kind of tell from our list of like concerts that we go to. Cage the Elephant's really fun too. Um, and someone finally is asking where I get the lovely flutter sleeve blouses. I didn't even know that I was going to wear a flutter sleeve blouse, but um, it's one of their favorite styles. I get a lot of my clothes, especially the ones that I wear on these uh, unboxings from Stitch Fix, and you can just kind of tell them that you like them. I think some of the brands I've, that, of the ones that I wear all the time are Calvin Klein, Daniel Rain, but I'm sure that if you talk to the stylist and I'll leave a link for that too. Uh, you can tell them you like flutter sleeve blouses because I do too. Um, that was kind of a weird question to end on, but let me just do the random number picker to find out who our winner is. So we had 26 different entries, people who had multiple questions. I only entered them once. And that is number 19. And number 19 is... Oh, guess who it is? It's Anonimo, which I won't reveal who you are because I know who you are. But uh, Anonimo, who asked, asked like five or six questions but only got one entry, was naturally our winner. So we'll be receiving a mystery box from yours truly. I will get in touch with you soon. Thank you guys so much for the questions and for watching this video. And hopefully I'll see you soon in my next unboxing.